Hello, welcome to today's video. We're going to talk about bonds and we're going to look into how can we use bonds in our personal portfolio and in your financial plan. So let's get started. We're going to look at different types of bonds and we're also going to evaluate how they can be used for achieving your own personal investment goal. We'll also go into detail step by step how you can buy and sell bonds. Um, and also understanding the trade-off between risk and return. Uh, of course, most important is to figure out how you can use bonds in your personal portfolio. Uh, there is an advanced topic and this is optional. Uh, we'll go over the calculations of different types of returns. First, we're going to go over some vocabulary. Uh, this may sound a little bit boring, but it's really important. Part of finance is the landscape is that it has a lot of jargons and it's important to understand the details. So the uh, first and foremost is something called the face value or the principal. So this compared to your personal finance, this is the amount that you have to pay back in maturity. So in your personal finance, when you borrow money, that's the amount that you borrow. So that's called the principal. Maturity day is the day on which the bond is due. And the bond, again, it refers to the face value. So this is the principal amount that you owe. Coupon payment is the term that we use to describe interest payment. And we'll explain that in a little bit. Coupon payment is the amount that um, bondholders will receive on a given day. Or instead of calling it interest, we're going to call it coupon payment to avoid confusion. And you'll see in a little bit why we do that. Uh, the For most uh, bonds, the coupon rate is clearly stated. In fact, they are usually part of the name of the bond. Again, we will see that in uh, in the in an example. Uh, we the use the coupon rate is used to compute coupon payment. And coupon most bonds that you see will have fixed coupon rates. Um, even though some bonds will have floating rates, but the majority of the bonds that we will examine will have fixed rates. So how much coupon you will get each year, so annual means per year, is equal to the coupon rate times the face value. So once again, the face value is the principal of the bond. The coupon, when do you receive this coupon payment is also specified. The coupon payment days are the days on which you receive the payment. And most corporate bonds and government bonds have um, a semi-annual or every six months as their payment schedule. So for example, if the annual coupon payment is $100, that means that you'll, give, you'll get $50 every six months because you get it. This is per year. This is the annual coupon payment and this is every six months. Another term that is very important to know for bond investing is the yield to maturity. Yield to maturity is the market interest rate. So as you see, there are different terms that, are, that may be related to interest. This is the going interest rate in the market and it is used to determine the price of the bond on a given day. Uh, so market price, as the name imply, is the market price. And what is important to for an investor is to know that if you buy a bond after it has been issued, or if you sell a bond before it matures, the price that you pay or get or receive is the market price, not the face value. And another thing to remember is that bond prices are often quoted as a percentage of face value but it is not obvious. You will see that a bond will be quoted as 94.5, for example. But that it doesn't say 94.5%, it just says 94.5. Uh, the price is actually the face value times 94.5 divided by 100. So what that means is the 94.5 here is implied as a percentage. So this is actually 94.5 percent but the convention is so is that they omit the percentage another important thing to take into account is um, the specific characteristic of the bond and whether or not not the bond has a call option a call option allows the company that issues the bond to pay, repay the debt early before the maturity date. What that means is that if the bond gets called, obviously 
the company will only call the bond if it is to their advantage. So if the so what that means is they'll typically call a bond if the interest rate has gone down. And if an investor's bond gets called, now they'll get the principal back or the face value back. But then now we have to find a new bond and the new bonds will now be at a lower interest rate. So it is uh, advantageous to the issuer, but disadvantage to the investor. This is in contrast to another concept called sinking fund. Sinking fund is designed to protect the investor. Uh, the idea of a sinking fund is that the company will repay part of the principal along the way so that it is not, doesn't have a huge outstanding balance at the, on the maturity date. So this is a good idea. So they have scheduled days that they start paying off the principal. However, it depends on the details in the contract. The contract can specify one of two ways for sinking fund redemption to happen. In one case, they the company purchased the uh, bonds in the open market to satisfy the sinking fund redemption requirement. And this has no impact on uh, the investors because in the market, these are investors looking to sell anyways. So the company is simply buying bonds back from investors who are interested in selling. On the other hand, if the, um, if the contract allows uh, the company to randomly select bondholders and repay face value, then the unlucky investors that get selected by this uh, random selection scheme will face the same consequence as the bond getting called. The main difference here is that not every investor will get called. In a callable bond, the entire bond issue will be repaid all at once. In a sinking fund situation, only a very limited number, a small number of investors will be called on a specific date. Again, not all sinking funds are redeemed in this way. It depends on whether it's an open market redemption or a random selection redemption. So the bond contracts are important to pay attention to. Now that you have a basic understanding of the vocabulary, we can talk about different types of bonds. The first and the most uh, common types of bonds are bonds issued by the US federal government. And it's important to pay attention to the term. All, gov all bonds that are issued by the US government, and these are bonds that are backed by the faith and credit of the entire United States government, they are called treasuries. And different treasuries are, used, are distinguished by maturities. Uh, the shortest maturity are called T-bills, and T-bills are usually less than a year. So that's the main distinction. So these are very, very short term. And they're called bills. Um, the important to, uh, thing to remember is that uh, very unique about TBU is that they do not pay coupon during the life of the bond. So they're called zero coupon. So you get no in, no coupon payment. Uh, the face value is you pay a maturity, but when you purchase a TBU, you buy it at a price that's much less than the face value. And that process is called a discount. Um, so you don't, so let's say if you buy $10,000 in T-bills, you don't pay $10,000 at the time of purchase, you pay a lower price, but then at maturity, you receive $10,000. And the difference between what you receive on maturity day and the price you pay is the implied coupon payment. The second type of, of bond is t nooks So this is, has a maturity between two to 10 years. So this is intermediate term. Uh, and the long term is called T-bonds and its maturity is from uh, 20 to 30 years. So the, min the name here really signifies the duration. So this is short term, less than one year. This uh, t nooks are intermediate term and T-bonds are long term. All T-bonds, t nooks and T-bills are fixed rate and they are fixed face value with one exception. This exception is called TIPS. TIPS stands for Treasury Inflation Protected Security, and it is very unique. Uh, TIPS has a maturity anywhere from five to 30 years. Uh, the important thing about TIPS is that the principle on TIPS goes up and down with inflation. So that is why it's called Inflation Protected Security. And remember that coupon payment is defined as coupon rate times 
the face value. So even though the coupon rate remains fixed on tips, the principal changes. So that means both the principal and the coupon payment amount, so not the coupon rate, but the coupon payment amount changes with inflation. Of all the investment that you can think of, tips is probably the lower, lowest risk because um, it protects you against inflation and it's also backed by the faith and credit of the entire United States. As a result, the return on tips, you on tips are typically very low. The low return does not mean that it's a bad investment. It just depends on what the intent of the investment is. For example, if you are a or you're advising uh, someone who is retired in their 70s or 80s, and their main concern is to keep up with inflation to have sufficient money to uh, to supply that support them in retirement, a uh, tips is a good option. Um, however, if you are young and you are saving for future retirement and you need your investment to grow, then tips will probably offer too low a return because it's too low a risk. So if you are someone in your 80s, then the low risk and low return will be an appropriate investment. The second type of bonds are issued by U.S. government agencies. So these are called agency bonds. And, they, and these agencies can be directly um, under the U.S. government, or they can be agencies that are just related to the U.S. government. Uh, the important thing to remember is that not all agency bonds are backed by the full faith and credit of the United States. And the name of these bonds can be tricky. So let's take a look at some of these examples. So as I said, these bonds are issued by agencies and some they are not by the Treasury. Some are guaranteed and some are not. So let's take a look at one example. There are two, uh, these are two main uh, um, government agency. One is called Ginny May, and Ginny May stands for Government National Mortgage Association. And Ginny May bonds are, are guaranteed by the U.S. government. Remember when we talk about home mortgage, Ginny May or the Government National Mortgage Association issue bonds under the Federal Home uh, Housing Authority, the FHA. So if you're a first time home buyer, you can qualify for an FHA loan. And those loans were financed by Ginny Mae bonds. And those are directly issued by the FHA. On the other hand, Fed, Freddie Mac, which is issued by the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation. Notice that it has the name Federal in the agency's name, but it is not guaranteed by the U.S. government. Freddie Mac is a private corporation that does mortgage, uh, and they also sell mortgages and they sell bonds to finance the mortgages that they loan out. So just pay very attention, very careful attention to not the name, but the contract of the bond. The third types of bonds are issued by local governments. Local governments, uh, these, these bonds are referred to as municipals or munis. Um, and local government will include everything from state government, counties, cities, towns. Um, there are two main types of municipal bonds. One is called general obligation bond, and this is uh, backed by the taxing power. So, for example, a common one will be a city wants to build a new school, and they will issue bonds to finance the building of the school, and then the payment will come from future property tax in the town. Uh, other general obligation bond may be used to for example, build a new water treatment system uh, or buy a new fire engine for the town. So those are very common occurrences and they are typically financed this way. And the payment will come from local taxes. And most of the, most of the time, those are property tax in the U United States. Another type of bond is called revenue bond. Revenue bond is, pay is tied to a specific project. Uh, a, a very common example is a bond used to finance building highways and or bridges, and then tolls will be inst uh, will be installed or instigated at the bridge or on the highway, and revenue from the toll will be used to pay off the bond. Another very common one is uh, 
uh, school. So some of you are university students uh, and your school may have uh, new dormitories. And the room and board fee that you pay to the school is the revenue that will be used to pay off the bond that the school um, issued to build those new dorms. An important thing about municipal bond is that they are usually tax exempt from federal taxation. So this is very interesting because uh, when you buy a federal bond, a treasury bond, a T-bill, T-bond, a T-note, they are not tax exempt, but a municipal bond is. And the reason for that is the government, this, are, this is a special tax treatment for the U.S. government to subsidize local municipalities. And the reason uh, that is important is because by allowing the interest or the coupon payment on municipal bonds to be tax exempt, the local governments can issue bonds a lower interest rate and still be competitive in the market. So um, there's a way to compute the taxable equivalent yield. So let's take a look at an example. If a municipal offers a 4% tax exempt bond and an investor has a 30% tax rate, then a competitive private bond or treasuries will have to issue 5.75% to be tax equivalent. So what that means is if you take 5.71% times 1 minus 30% to figure out what the after-tax return is, it will come up to 4%. And the so what that means is if the federal government is paying 5.71%, the local municipal bonds only have to pay 4% and they'll be competitive. So the local government can pay a lower interest rate to borrow money compared to other players in the bond market. The last type of bond we're going to mention are corporate bonds. Corporate bonds are not very common, not very popular. Only the very large corporations can afford to issue bonds. Uh, you want to pay specific attention to corporate bonds because they are much, much more varied. Um, so the U.S. federal government bond treasuries, they are pretty straightforward. The only thing you have to uh, distinguish among treasuries are maturity. Are they short term, intermediate term, or long term? Uh, municipal bonds and corporate bonds, you need to pay more attention to the nuances, whether or not they are tied to a project or they are secured by a particular asset. Um, and then you also have to pay attention to seniority. The other uh, seniority means who gets paid first in case of bankruptcy. Uh, convertible bonds uh, is another um, option or another characteristic of corporate bonds. Some corporate bonds are convertible, which allows you to convert the bond into stocks in under special circumstances. The one thing that um, is important to pay attention to when you're buying non-treasuries, meaning not bonds issued by the U.S. government, are uh, bond ratings. Bond ratings um, um, tells you a little bit about the default risk of the bond. So the highest rating is called AAA, and there are different agencies, different rating agencies, and they have slightly different name and culture. So some agencies use AAA or capital letter, some are A, also three A's, but lowercase letter. Um, and then the next level down is double A. And some rating agencies have AA1, AA2. Uh, that represents double A, single A, and so on. So you, the general idea is that the more A's you have, the higher the credit rating. This is similar to the credit score for an individual consumer. So the higher the credit rating, the less, the lower the default risk, and chances are the lower the interest rate. Very important to know is very specific or special credit rating is anything that's below triple B is considered high yield. Uh, in the old days, they're called junk. Uh, that's because they're very high risk. Um, but to make the bond more attractive, they use a euphemism and call them high yield bond or speculative bond. These bonds are very risky uh, and is generally not recommended for individual investors. Uh, also pay attention that the credit rating for a bond is different from the credit rating for a company because a bond can have special security, meaning mortgages, for example, and that will enable it to have a higher bond rating than a company uh, as a whole. We'll take a pause here, and when we come back, we're going to take a look at how we will actually buy and sell bonds. 
See you soon.